What's up everybody? My name is David and I'm Manny and today we're going to talk about some real life dragons, the Mexican alligator lizard, also known as Abronia. So the arboreal alligator lizards, also known as the abronia, this specific little one is called an abronia graminia or a green Mexican alligator lizard. These guys are, like the name suggests, from Mexico and Central America, usually around Guatemala. And they're actually found in the cloud forest of the, you know, of those countries. Yeah, the reason they call it a cloud forest is because it's a rainforest in very high elevation. They're, they're, it's like about 4,000 feet above sea level, so it does reach the clouds, so that's why they, they get the name for it, um, the cloud forest. Now, their temperatures are pretty cool over there, so these guys we like to keep room temperature, um, just like in the cloud forest, most of the time it's gonna be around in the 70s. It can get to low 40s all the way to high 90s. These guys can handle that, but you don't want that for extended periods of time. Best is to keep on like 75, which is what we do and we've had a lot of success, success with. So these guys in the wild are strictly insectivores. They'll pretty much eat anything that moves from spiders to beetles, crickets, grasshoppers, anything that they can find in their area. And one thing about the Abronia is that Manny was saying earlier, they are from a high elevation forest, so the temperature ranges a whole lot. In the summer days, it can get up to 90 degrees in the hottest spots. And in the cooler winter days, it can get up to 40 or even the high 30s. And when they do get that cold, they tend to all bundle up together, maybe underground or with, you know, um, with a sphagnum moss. You know, they tend to go to the cooler sides of the of their environment. And when temperatures are good, these guys actually like to spend a lot of their time in or around bromeliads. Bromeliads are very common where they come from, and the, one of the reasons why they really like being around them is because it does hold water very, very well. So it provides constant drinking water for them so they can get hydrated and a lot of the bugs like to reproduce in that standing water. So when keeping these guys in captivity, unless you're trying to breed them, I would just keep them in room temperature. In the 70s, it's perfect. They can handle, like we were saying, they can handle a wide variety of temperatures. But the important thing is, is you want to make sure they can thermoregulate on their own. So if you are going to have a basking spot of like, let's say, 85 degrees or 90 degrees, you have to make sure that the opposite side of the cage is a lot cooler, maybe into the high 60s or 70s that way that if the abronia doesn't want to be too hot it can go and cool off on its own if you're keeping the abronia especially the babies with a hot spot and you're not giving them any sort of you know thermal regulation they will die on you really quick And another very important thing about the Abronias, they are very versatile. They can be kept successfully in, gra in glass cages and screen cages. We've had six, even tubs we've had success, well, well ventilated tubs. We've had success in keeping them in all three. Um, so another one important thing is misting, you know, hydration. Um, it really depends on what you use. If you use stuff like tubs or glass, I'd probably be missed like once every other day because it does hold water and humidity a lot better. If you do, sc do screen cages, I do recommend everyday mist things. Now, a very important thing, especially with babies, is not to over mist. You don't want to keep these guys wet like an amphibian. You want them to go through wet and dry periods. That is very important, because, especially with babies, because if you do over mist, they will die. We've noticed that with you know raising plenty of all the plenty of babies that we have raised, and that is very important. So I would do like a good misting once a day, let it go through dry periods, and then you know mist again. Yeah, and you can also provide a dripper system. Um, a lot of times, you know, with most reptiles, arboreal reptiles, rainforest animals that we give them a, a dripper system, they learn to recognize that 
the little drops is water and then they go drink when they're thirsty. Um, like we were saying earlier, abronias are strictly insectivores, so you will have to feed only insects. Now, you could feed for the babies and the juveniles, we, you could feed every day to every other day. The adults, you could feed three or four times a week. Um, what we mostly feed here are gut-loaded crickets. You could also feed roaches, different types of, types of worms, although I would stay away from too many worms because they are high in fat. And when you feed any kind of crickets or any insect for that matter, you want to make sure you're gut loading the insects and you're dusting them with calcium with D3. One of the calciums that we use here is a calcium plus because it has all the vitamins and minerals that it needs. You don't have to get three different jars of calcium and, mi and minerals to you know rotate. You just dust that every single time you feed and you will be fine. Another supplement that's very good for the abronias is the super pig by Rapashi. It has a lot of carotenoids, if I said that right, um, that you know will benefit them and you know when we're trying to keep these animals in captivity, especially because we really haven't figured them out in captivity, we want to make sure that we're giving them a wide variety of different nutrition so that they can live long and healthy. So a basic setup for them would be, we like to use like an orchid or a sphagnum moss bottom. Sphagnum moss is great because it, it does carry antibacterial components, which do, do definitely be, uh, benefit the abronias. Then we like to put like cork bark, um, baked plants, you can use live plants, vines. like pothos are great, bromeliads as I mentioned before are great, vines, um, you can do a lot with them there. And then we like, we put a rainforest UVB on all of them. That is very important and as he mentioned before, you can put a, a like a wheat heat bulb in there, but just make sure it can thermoregulate. And I do not recommend putting a heat bulb on the babies. Um, I only recommend that for the adults if they have a big enough enclosure where they can thermoregulate like we said earlier. So for the babies, you can, we recommend keeping them in like a 12 by 12 by 12 enclosure, whether that's you know glass or screen, it's really up to you. And for one adult, we recommend an 18, 18, 18. And if you want to keep a pair, they usually do pretty well in 18, 18, 24. You could even do 18, 18, 36. You know, the taller, the better. These guys are arboreal. And trust me, they will use all that space you give them. favorite things about these lizards is their scales on their body. They look like they're just armor plated and they look like they're just, you know, ready for war, ready to go take a castle over or something because they legit look like little dragons. And something people don't really notice is the pattern on their heads. Yeah. Very, very cool patterning, very intricate patterning, man. It's almost, it's almost a trip. I, I always tell this story, but the first time I ever saw an abronia was in the Miami Zoo when I was just a kid and they had maybe two or three of them. I was so stoked. I had maybe gotten like a crested gecko. So I went home, I researched these guys and one abronia cost $1,000 and some change. I was, so I put that dream of owning an abronia on the back burner and a couple years later, or well, a bunch of years later, now I get to actually keep them and we actually get to work with them now. So that's super awesome. And I mean, just look at that face. It's like a little, little dragon, little dinosaur, man. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We definitely enjoy making videos about these cool little creatures. So make sure you follow us. If you like our videos, you know, hit the subscribe button down below. Um, if you guys have any questions, you know, you can always feel free to contact us. We'll always help you out. Um, and just make sure, you know, we have an Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, YouTube, Poshmark, Etsy. We got all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, that stuff. Yeah, yeah, we got all that stuff. So, please, you know, if you like our content, give us a follow. And, you know, if you guys, thank you, man. Thank you for all the love you guys give us. You guys make this possible. And we are very grateful for everything, you know, you do for us. So, until next time, we'll see you next Saturday. And thanks for watching.